Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Well, guess where my Bible is open to today? It's open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to begin a study in the book of 2 Peter. If you can right now, reach over and pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there. 2 Peter, I'll begin reading the very first verse, but then I'll be skipping around and you'll see why here in just a moment. So get your Bible. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. We're going to be giving the big picture here of the book of 2 Peter, and we're going to do it in such a way that I think think you're going to remember it. I also have a gospel tract in my hand. This one's entitled, It's Free. Did you know that salvation is a free gift to us of God? But so many people, they know that in their head, but they don't believe that in their heart. They believe they've got to merit God's mercy. They've got to merit God's salvation. No, (laughs) salvation comes through the righteousness of Jesus Christ is given to us as a free gift when we, by faith, turn from our sin and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. I want to talk about a gospel tract here in just a moment, but let me get us ready for 2 Peter this way. There's an old saying that's really true. It makes a very basic point, and the saying is this, one picture is worth a thousand words. Now, beloved, for over 30 years, I spent at least one week, if not five weeks, every summer in youth camp speaking to eight to 11-year-olds. And brother, I enjoyed it immensely. One thing about speaking to youngsters, one thing that it did for me personally, is that it caused me to learn how to make important Bible truths simple. Well, today I want to begin a study, as I said, of the book of 2 Peter. And if I were teaching 2 Peter to 11, for 8 to 11-year-olds, I'd probably begin by making a sandwich. <laughs> it would be my picture for the book of 2 Peter. I would make a peanut butter and bologna sandwich. Why? Well, because a peanut butter and bologna sandwich would stick in the brains of those kiddos and they wouldn't forget it. Now, I do realize that you are not an 8 to 11-year-old kiddo, but I'm, I'm sticking with my peanut butter and bologna sandwich picture, and here's why. I want you to remember the big ideas that are here in Second Peter. So get your Bible, and uh, if I can use a pun, get a hungry heart, and let's join me, please, in the book of Second Peter. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It refers to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. Now, almost all of our tracts are written in paragraph form, but this one is not. This one, it's free, was designed with one intent. It was designed to give a tool that you can use that showed just the scriptures to help you lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Again, in the front cover are the words, it's free. But as you open the gospel tract on the left-hand side, it asks the question, what is free? The statement is then made, salvation is free, and there's five Bible verses that explain that salvation is a free gift from God. The right-hand panel of the track, as it's open, asks this question, where can I find it? Where can I find this gift? The answer is in God's risen Son, and there's four Bible verses there to give the clear teaching that Jesus Christ is the place where we find God's salvation. The last panel of this, as you close the track, is where and how may I have it? Oh, friend, we've got to make the gospel simple, not just for kids, but for adults as well. Here's a great tool to use to share the gospel one-on-one. It's free. 
At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give you some contact information for us. Please give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. There's about 42 tracks in that sample packet. We'll send it to you, as I said, free of charge. We want to be a partner with you in the work of seeing the gospel go to more people. Please become a partner with us today. Let me be a partner with you. Well, if your Bible's open to 2 Peter chapter 1, I begin reading at verse 1. It says this, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jump over to verses 12 and 13. They say, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it is meet as long as I am in this tabernacle, a reference to his body, to stir you up in putting you in remembrance. Remember the word remember there. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now please go to chapter 3, and verse 1, it says this, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. There's that word remember again. Now, I've read these verses because they help me to make the sandwich I want to do on the broadcast today. There are three big ideas here that give us the flow of 2 Peter. These three ideas are simply this. Are you ready? Number one, holy living. Number two, remember what you've been taught. And then number three, false teachers. Now, that's it. As it relates to the big idea, the three ideas are holy living, remember truth, and beware of false teachers. You know I love to illiterate my outlines. Here are my three big ideas using words that begin with the letter R, like in the word rabbit. They are this. Number one, right living or holy living. Number two, remember learning. Remember what you've been taught. And number three, ruined leaders. Ruined leaders, referring to the false teachers. All right. Now, I can almost hear some of you asking through the radio, Brother Mark, where is this sandwich picture fit in that you've been talking about? Well, friend, I am glad that you asked. The book of Second Peter has only three basic big ideas, as I said. But two of those ideas are repeated. Okay, let's get to the peanut butter and bologna sandwich picture right here and now. On the outside of every sandwich is the bread, of course. There are two slices of bread. The bread is where the sandwich begins and the sandwich ends. Well, Second Peter begins and it ends with an emphasis on right living, holy living. Chapter 1, verse 4, talks about believers partaking in the divine nature and thereby escaping the corruption in their daily lives, that the corruption is in the world. Then at the end of the book, chapter 3, verse 18, there were challenged to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, right living, holy living are the two slices of bread in the sandwich. That's how the book begins. That's how the book ends, right living. The second half of 2 Peter chapter 1 is where the word remember is going to be used a number of times. Peter says he wants the saints to remember what he and the other apostles had taught them. But then chapter 3 opens with Peter saying, I want you to remember. He wants them to remember who taught them and where they can go to find the truth, which is going to be the scriptures. The charge of remembering is the sticky peanut butter that holds this whole sandwich together. Again, chapter 3, verse 1, I read it a moment ago, it says this, Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. All right. 
We have the bread. We got the peanut butter. Now let's deal with the bologna. I don't know whether you like bologna sandwiches or not. My wife does not. I happen to like bologna. But I use the word bologna because, well, more often than not, people, when they use the word bologna, they use it of something that is often not valid, not true, something that they don't like. Chapter 2 of 2 Peter is all about false teachers. We're going to be using the word apostates to talk about them when we get into that part of the book. Chapter 2 is about religious teachers who are themselves ruined, and they are involved in ruining the lives of those who are listening to them and following what they're teaching. Chapter 2 is a warning. In chapter 2, Peter will be moved by this Holy Spirit to remind us that there were past tense re- ruinous teachers and preachers in the Old Old Testament times. There will come ruinous teachers in the future, and he also says that there are ruinous teachers at work in the present. So, the flow of the message of 2 Peter goes like this. Chapter 1 begins with an urging for the believers to live holy, to practice right living. The second half of chapter one is Peter saying, I want you to remember, remember the truth about Jesus. Remember what you've learned. Then chapter two is all about the ruinous teachers that want to undo what they've learned and bring in damnable heresies. But then chapter three begins with what that call again to remember uh, what they've learned and finishes with a challenge to continue to live correctly, to live right. Now, there you are. There is the big picture of 2 Peter. There is your peanut butter and bologna sandwich. My friend, do you do realize that there are people under the guise of religious teachers who are teaching false things? They're teaching, well, to borrow my word, they're teaching bologna. They're teaching things that are not true. Now, here is the takeaway from today's study. Friend, there is truth. God has spoken. There is truth, reliable truth, truth about eternal matters. It's nowhere in a fog. It's found in the word of God. This truth came to us from God. He put it in written form. It's called here in 2 Peter, the sure word of prophecy. We're talking about the Bible. We have a sure word from God. We can take it to the bank. We can rest our eternal destinies on the truth of God. He's recorded it in the word of God. We can use the word of God to evaluate what is taught to us by even Mark Smith. If we learn and do God's truth, we're going to end up living holy or godly lives. We're not going to fall prey to false teachers. All right, my beloved, when we come back tomorrow on the broadcast, if the Lord tarries, we're going to give you some, hopefully, whet your appetite to want to read and study the book of Second Peter. But the point right now for today is this. You and I have the Bible in front of us. Have you read it? Are you reading it every day? Are you relying on what it says or some TV preacher or radio preacher to bank your eternal destiny on? Friend, the only sure word of prophecy you and I have is the Bible, not your pastor. Your pastor, I hope he's a godly man, but he can stray from the Bible. Mark Smith can stray from the Bible, but you've got a Bible. Read your Bible. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.